Okay. Today is uh, the historic dockyard in Chatham. I'm going to have to widen the video a bit. Uh, I haven't actually entered it yet. This is Turk's shipyard, it says. Um, I'm assuming I can't go in there. But this is the actual historic dockyard uh, on the other side of these two buildings here. So on the left is the upper mast house. And the entrance is over there. There's actually the car park in there, <laughs> under cover. So there's a couple of life, uh, lifeboats there, and there's a couple of uh, ships in dock, I believe, further down. But uh, let's have a look on the inside. So these are the remains of the Lemur, which was broken apart uh, a couple of centuries ago and used as uh, under the floor boards, effectively, boarding. It was covered up over the years, over the centuries, and nobody knew it was here until about 20 years ago. It was discovered when they uh, took apart the flooring here. Just love the detail of this. I mean, look at this here. So this whole area, <coughs> excuse me, I'm trying to move away from people. So all of this uh, area onto here is uh, full of beams <coughs> from the Namur. But they don't know quite why they were kept because they're not, they weren't put here for it to be any, any structural use. I mean, it's common to recycle timbers from old boats, uh, old ships to be used, flooring and whatnot, but there's no obvious uh, structural reason why these were put here. I mean, and some of them are enormous. It's very impressive, though. That is one massive hangar dedicated to the RNLI with uh, lots of historic boats. Interesting uh, thing I noted, uh, I went on to one that was built in 48. And apparently, um, it wasn't until the 60s that the colour design changed on lifeboats. So, where the orange the top came in. And because it's a historic boat, they're not allowed to change it, so it's still got um, kind of blue and white on the top. One reason for that is um, when helicopters started being used, it was easier for the helicopter crew to spot the orange lifeboat. Sorry, the lifeboat, if it was orange. Hence why the colour. This place is enormous. That's the spirit of low stuff. See how big this place is. So this is the Edward Bridges, I can't see the date, oh, 75 to 94, and it's a uh, Tor Bay. This is quite big, I think it's the biggest one here actually. Alright, got to mind your head. Let's have a look inside. Electrical stuff. Okay, and oops. All rescued persons are taken below. Oh, I can't go there, fortunately. It's impressive, though, isn't it? Right, this is a neat piece of kit. This was used during the first Gulf War. Now this, um, I'm still in what I call the RNLI 
building, but um, it's got lots of military vehicles as well. Not weaponry as such. Um, so that's a giant Viper. It's a mine, cl mine clearance uh, device. So it launched a rocket packed with explosives. You know, here's a picture. So fire to rocket out the back there. Set off explosions behind the minefield. And this is a mine, what's the word? Mine layer, for want of a better word. So it's kind of a nifty piece of farm ploughing kit. It's a mine that I presume would come down there, along the and things like that. And if you look carefully, I'm going to have to pause the video, it's also got a Polaris uh, missile for some reason here. Yeah. Right down this end, there's various um, pontoon bridges from the different eras. Back, it's back as far as World War II anyway and then uh, into the 60s. So that's a heavy assault floating bridge pontoon there from the 50s to 60s. Tank bridge from 42 on the bottom there. That's that one there. And then a small and large box girder bridge from into all years, that's what it says. God, look at that. Boiler. For a reason I haven't quite worked out, Polaris missile. Now I couldn't help but notice uh, the juxtaposition here. It's just my sick sense of humour. There's a Polaris mi um, missile, and behind it is a big sign this way up. A general high up view inside the uh, again the RNLI display, but then the more military mere vehicles, the small mini submarine over there, which I haven't seen yet, and then the Polaris missile is in that direction. All right, I'm in the Ropery Museum. So the, uh, the building that was in earlier was 346 metres long, so it was, it was at the time the longest brick building in Europe. There are some mega bits of rope over here. I'm going to do it in the wrong, right order rather, I'm going to go around the other side. There's a funny smell in here. Anyway, oops. So, start with fibre. Then you end up with yarn. Probably better if I show you this, isn't it? That's strawed, strand. Sorry, wasn't looking at it properly. up to cable. I mean I've got a small hand but I get the size of that. So this is the entrance to the rope laying ropery laying floor. So this is the building that's three hundred meters long. This is phenomenal building. I mean, look at the length of this thing. Obviously, it's built 
to make long pieces of rope as long as the navy needed. So uh, as I said, 350 meters. I'm afraid I can't remember the name of the machines. But this is impressive, isn't it? So I couldn't film a lot inside because of it being a guided tour, but this is a, a dry dock walkthrough. Let's see how far I can do it. Fortunately, the sun is on the other side. It's already quite the way down. Okay. One interesting comment is that, uh, all right, the front you can see that dome. That's where it had its eyes, so to speak, sonar and whatnot. But this was a, I suppose you could call it a spy sub. So even now, um, the guy couldn't tell us much about its missions. It didn't feel as big inside as I expected it to be. I know it's a submarine, but... Um, for some reason I still expected it to be a bit, a bit, a bit bigger. This one. It's a bit smelly down here, I have to say. Mind your head, hopefully get a better view on this side because the sun's up. Actually, you do. I've only seen a tiny fraction of it. Um, HMS Cavalier, I haven't been on that yet. Just thought I'd show you this marker. So this is the stone that marks the site of the old single dock constructed in 1623 and replaced in 1858. Basically, uh, this is where HMS Victory was made.